Hello legends and super legends. Welcome to Velo Harmony. Today for Review Wednesday, we're going to be talking about gloves and hats. I want to start with uh, the different challenges we face when you're trying to decide which pair of gloves to wear, which hat to wear based on the weather and try to kind of simplify and give you some guidelines. Um, I'm going to start with hats. So for example, <clears throat> if the temperature is 10 C, which is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, you can pretty much, depending on whether you run hot or, you know, some people need less stuff to be comfortable. So you got to identify what you need. But 10 C is a good barometer. If it's 10 C or lower, especially if the day is windy or whatever, you can wear the, for example, this wool cap is an example that you could wear. Uh, the colder it is, the more useful this is. If it's going to be like a day where it's 10 C, but then the, the wind is coming from, from the warmer part of, let's say like the south, then you may want to err on the side of a cap like this. This is like a lighter polyester type of hat that you could wear. The wool caps are best if it's going to be cold and rainy because they resist water and they dry easily. So... This is for very cold temperatures. Let's say below 4C, you would wear a wool cap like this. All of these can be worn. They're almost like a cap a lot of the Belgians wear. All of these can be worn under a helmet. This is very warm. So I would say probably from 5C or lower, you wear this cap. If it's going to be the same temperature and you're going to be riding hard. And that's the thing. There's so many variables depending on the intensity of your ride. If the ride's going to be hard, high tempo, then you really want to stay away from the wool cap. You want to wear a slightly lighter. It's warm, but it's still lighter. This is the pro team cap that I like to wear. Or you can also just wear the cotton cap, especially if the tempo is going to be high. Now, if it's going to be near freezing or below, you want to definitely wear this wool cap. Okay, regardless of your tempo, you want to wear that wool cap. It's going to be freezing like 25 Fahrenheit, like, you know, you're going below zero Celsius because these cotton caps don't fare well in freezing temperatures. They're better, say, from 4C and up. You can wear these cotton caps. And then once it gets above 10C, the, for me, I, I end up taking them off and just wearing a helmet, especially if I'm riding hard. So that's the thing. You're splitting hairs. So it's hard to decide what to wear. So you've got to experiment and learn from each ride what works for your body. Somebody else might need a warmer cap in the same temperature that you might need a lighter cap. So I, I want to just summarize with the caps by saying that when it's very cold below 5C, a heavy wool cap would work great. When it's going to be somewhat cool and you're not going to be riding hard, you can wear this. If you're going to be riding hard, you want a lighter cap. The harder you're going to ride, you want a lighter cap. Now, there's nothing wrong with starting out with a cap like this and then you start to ride hard, you get hot, you take it off, put it in your jersey pocket. And then once your intensity goes down, nothing wrong with putting it back on. I do that a lot. A lot of times I'll start a ride and have to yank off the cap because my body just didn't need it that day. So caps are a lot trickier than other things. So you kind of have to, you want to have a light cap or heavy cap for very cold days. And then your good old cap, cotton cap. The cotton cap range, I would say is probably 4C and up. Anything below that, they don't fare very well when it's very cold. Okay, so they will work in the same range as this one. This is just a different material. I like this one is wet because it keeps the, the water from going through. The cotton cap just gets wet. So when it's cold and wet, you don't want to use a cotton cap. You want these materials like wool and other synthetic materials that can keep the water from going through the hat. So I'm going to move on to gloves. Same situation. I like to use 10C as a barometer. A glove like this, this is the Pro Team gloves, 10C or above, they're perfect. You could probably go a little below that, but much below that you, you will need liners with these gloves. They're almost like Castelli makes a glove called the Lightness, Castelli Lightness gloves, same situation. 
10C or above, 10C to about maybe 18C. That's a good range for these light gloves. That's what they are. It's the same thing with this. This is a brevet glove from Rafa, and it's uh, for the same situation, 10C. So days where it starts at a 10C, it's not going to go much above 18C. These gloves are perfect. It's a cool day. You know, and you just wear these because you cannot wear the fingerless gloves. Um, let's talk about below 4C or below. When it's very cold, and I'll talk about cold first, and we'll talk about cold and wet. When it's very cold, I have these, what they call the, these are like the deep winter gloves from Rafa. I have it in black as well. These are for very cold temperatures, all the way below zero. And sometimes you may have to even line them. I'll talk about the liners in a little bit. These are for serious cold temperatures. The fabric here resists water, so water won't easily go through. It's not waterproof, but it, it does not easily allow water to go through. So it, it will be good if it rains and it's cold, it will keep your hands warm and dry. Now, if it's below zero Celsius, below freezing, below 32 Fahrenheit, these gloves fare best if you wear them with a liner. So. The Rafa gloves have a tendency to work well together if you use their liner. This, this uh, merino wool liner that Rafa has is really good in that it's very thin. It provides good insulation. And if the day warms up, you can even take out the outer glove and just ride with these. They're designed. They even got a wipe on them. I like that about them. So they're designed to be used independently. In days where it's 10 C or above, you can just wear these. They will work. When it's brutally cold, you can wear these as an inner layer with this glove. And this will go well below zero Celsius and well below freezing Fahrenheit. Now they have a tendency, they're a little tight when, you, when you're putting them on, but once they get in, they're not that bad. I mean, I'm trying to get it in there. I particularly, if it's very brutally cold, see, if, when, once you get it in there, it feels a little tight, but you can still function. I don't particularly like the way it feels with that in there and it varies from glove to glove, but it will give you the layering you need for your hands when it's below freezing and you're out there for hours. That's what you need. Now, this layer, what I like about it is the merino wool layer will work with the other gloves in the system. For example, you go out and let's say it starts at a 10 C and then you say, well, okay, I want to wear these gloves. But then you say, well, it might be really windy that day. Or let's say it was 5C or 4C. And you say, I don't feel like wearing these guys. I want to wear my lighter gloves. You can layer these guys. And I think that the layers work better with these gloves than with this one. Because this one is it's a little more rigid, the shell, because it's designed to keep water out. So on a dry day that's cold... You can use this because this feels much better in here. This layering with the pro team gloves feels much better than with this deep winter gloves. It just feels tighter in here. I prefer the deep winter gloves by themselves without the layer. So these two gloves together feel like you're wearing one and they're warmer. So if it's going to be, uh, say, 4C and up, you can wear this. You can layer. If it's going to be much below zero, you, these won't work. Even with these two, it would just be too cold for your hands. That's when you bring in this guy. It, it's always, you've got to balance, you've got to juggle, find out what works for you. The same layering works for the Brevet gloves. A lot of these gloves, because of the way the shells are made, they're very easy to work when you layer them versus this one. This one is more form-fitting. And so it does not accept the layering very easily. So it feels tighter. These gloves work better with the merino wool gloves. The feel of them. It's, it doesn't feel like you've layered your fingers. And they really work well. Um, the reason I'm focusing on that, I will try other layering things here and then show you the difference. Because the, 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 the merino wool layer is nice and thin. And it works better with these gloves than just other liners. You know, they'll work, but they just feel a little more constricting. So, for example, this is another glove in the same range of 10C and above. I think they call it their 
winter glove or something like that. They've got all this. That's the thing with Rafa. You got to know what the range is. The, the softer the material of the glove, the easier it is to wear a liner with it. That's why these mid-range light gloves work better than this one. This is more form-fitting and is designed. This shell will keep water off your hands. Um, these liners even work. The Rafa liners even work with the Endura gloves that I wore because of these Endura Thinsulate gloves. I will put links to all of these down in the description. The Endura Thinsulate gloves work really well for keeping water off your hands. They are waterproof. I've ridden them for hours in the rain. Nothing got through the glove. It gets a little damp, but that's it. And it works well when you layer it. This, these gloves work best 10C or below. You go much above 10C, your hand will get hot. It, they're uncomfortable. Because much above 10C, then you, you're bordering on these lighter gloves or your fingerless gloves. It gets to like 15C, you might as well wear the fingerless gloves. Uh, before I get to the fingerless gloves, let me talk about other liners other than the Merino Wool from Rafa. These are just made by Defeat. They're just liners that you can wear independently. They got little feet on the inside to give little grippers. So these work great independently, 10C or above. If you want to use them as liners, they will work best with your lighter gloves like these, not with this guy. So for example, I could wear this and wear the Pro Team gloves, works great. Gives you two layers, so now you can go all the way down close to freezing and be comfortable. And you can get these liners anywhere. I mean, I'll put some links on uh, Velo Harmony website for the liners. So you, any of these soft, light gloves for 10C or above, they work best with liners. So the softer the shell of your gloves, the easier it is to get liners in there to where they feel good. That your hands are not tight and restricted. That's the key. And you, you, so you could have just the light glove and a liner and go all the way down to freezing. That would work great. So you don't have to get super... Uh, uh, heavy gloves if you already have these and where you can line them. Now, what I want to show you here is, say for example, it's raining really hard, hard and this glove is too warm, but you still want your hands to be dry. So for example, it's 15C and you don't have a waterproof glove or this waterproof glove in 15C will be too hot for your hands. So what do you do? So, in those situations, you have choices you can either wear, because it's a warm day, you can wear just your regular summer gloves. These are, these are our team gloves. I will do a separate review in the future um, on them, because right now, they just came in and I've had them. They're on the website for those of you who want them. Um, let me cut this thing on, off of them. I will do a separate review later talking about the specifics of how they function and everything. They're made by Santini and uh, they feel really, really good. They're the, the gloves I wore in the last group ride with Paul, the blue ones, is the model. We've got the short one and we've got the longer arrow one that comes just over this bone right here on your wrist. And as I said, I'll do a separate. So let's say it's a day that you want to wear these gloves. It's 18, 20 C and it's going to be wet and you want to go out there like we do. You have an appointment with your bike. You have another choice. And it's not only these gloves. You can wear the lighter gloves on a day and these are not waterproof and you want to keep the water off your hands. I got these. They're called over mitts. They're unusual. And some people refer to them as lobster claws. They keep your fingers together, which supposedly keeps the warmth. When you put your fingers together, they keep each other warm. So you have two fingers on one side and then two on the other side. And it has an opening here that you can get, take your finger out if you want to do something. I'll put it on and show you. So this is completely waterproof. And it's designed to be worn with other gloves, not bare hands. It has a, a nice, nice fleecy interior, but they tell you specifically that you, you need to wear other gloves 
and this is just an outer cut. That's why it's called an over mitt. So when you put it on, your index and your middle finger are on this side, and then your two fingers, by keeping them together, they stay warm. Of course, your thumb is here. It has a wipe right here. So that's how you would use them on your bike. If you needed to use your fingers, they design a little opening here where you can take your finger out and do stuff like on your computer or whatever, and then you just slip them back in, back in there. So you don't have to take the over mitt off if you, you, know, you want to use your finger. Whether you're wearing the fingerless gloves like I am or these gloves, it works the same way. But this will keep the rain off your hands. And this is, can be worn in any temperature, but you cannot wear it with the deep winter glove. It's just too thick. It won't fit under there. You can wear it with any of these other glove system and the over mid works great. And you will be able to work your bike like if you, you know, when you're riding, you can shift and do whatever with these. It works fine. And they, they, they keep water from going through. This is some kind of a hard, rubbery surface here. So it's nothing that's treated. It just keeps water out. And then the underside, they've got a nice grip under there. Call it an over mid. It was on sale. I got it. It's a really nice glove. You zip it up there and you're ready to go. So this will keep water off your hands in all temperatures basically so you would wear the gloves system that you want for the temperature and this is almost like a rain coat for your hands that's the best way i can describe that um so these gloves of course are best when it's 18c or higher you know these gloves now if it's let's say it's 10c and the winds from the south and there's a warm day yeah you can wear these too you know, that's what I ended up doing last week on you know, last week's ride. I started out with these and found out it was too warm and came back and got this version, the longer one. Let me show that to you guys. Let's cut this off. This is the arrow version. Slightly longer. It covers the your wrist very nice in our team colors okay the, the 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 gloves feel very supportive in your hand you know so i will put the links down there this is on the website as, uh, as well in the velo harmony shop for those of you who want to get a pair but i wanted to briefly just go over the glove system so you have to think in terms of what's the weather doing sometimes you have to step outside and see how it feels and it's okay to use a liner, especially if the morning's cold, use a liner. And then as it warms up, you can either take out the outer glove or take out the inner glove and just switch later in the ride. Nothing wrong with that. You don't have to have cold hands. There's enough out there to where at a minimum you can have a liner and have a light glove. And that will work for a lot of the ranges of temperatures that we usually ride in. So I wanted to cover that briefly today. If you all are interested in hearing about the different options for covering your feet and keeping your feet warm, let me know. In the meantime, I will put a link up here to some of the videos I've already made about overshoes and other things so that some of you guys can check it out. So no matter what, don't let the weather stop you. Get your caves in.